Number 29. A large centrifuge, like the one shown in figure 6.37a, is used to expose aspiring astronauts to accelerations similar to those experienced in rocket launches and atmospheric reentries. Letter A. At what angular velocity is the centripetal acceleration 10 g's if the rider is 15 meters from the center of rotation? All right. So I detailed the little picture over here. Um, we'll assume that the rider is in this location right at the edge. And uh, he or she is 15 meters right from the center of rotation. There's a centripetal acceleration, which always points, remember, towards the center of 10 g's. And we're trying to find the angular velocity. So let's first start with this question, angular velocity. Let's think of some formulas that have angular velocity in them. So I notice two of them on my right-hand side. And one of those we should select and try to solve uh, that equation for the angular velocity. Well, I already gave you the hint because this one isn't solved, right, for it. So that's the one we're going to be using. But if you look, right, we are given a radius, okay? And you might say, well, we're not given the, ang uh, the linear velocity. I know, right, but we are given the centripetal acceleration. And you realize, oh, in that equation, I do have a relationship between linear velocity and centripetal acceleration. So maybe it's two steps, right? Whereas this equation doesn't really afford us much. We don't have time. We don't have any radian measures in the problem. So hence why I'm gonna choose this equation to begin working with. So we have the linear speed or the tangential velocity equaling um, the radius multiplied by the angular velocity. So just solve this thing right away for angular velocity. So we know now that um, if we can find the tangential velocity and the radius, we can find omega. But again, like I mentioned before, we don't know the linear velocity. Therefore, we have to think, well, is there any way I can, uh, you know, relate linear velocity to maybe centripetal acceleration or anything else that was given in the problem? And that's where this equation now comes into play. That equation should now be uh, popping up into your mind. And you're saying to yourself, yeah, I do know a relationship, meaning a mathematical relationship. Um, that the centripetal acceleration is equal to the square of the linear velocity divided by the radius. So I can solve this thing, right, for the linear velocity. So I just got to cross multiply here. So it becomes centripetal acceleration multiplied by the radius is equal to the linear velocity squared. And then just take the square root of both sides. Excuse me, guys. Sorry. Take the square root of both sides uh, so that I can find just the velocity, right? So this should just simply be the square root centripetal acceleration multiplied by r. Now, I can take this result, okay, specifically write this part, and plug it on in for V, okay? So let's do that. So now I'm going to rewrite that equation. So I have angular velocity will equal square root of the centripetal acceleration multiplied by the radius all over the radius. And lo and behold, this is now my formula. All right, I know I have everything I need, right? They gave us the acceleration. The centripetal acceleration, that is, is 10 g's, but you know what g is, right? 9.8, so we, we can easily calculate this. So these, and the um, angular velocity here will be the square root of 10 multiplied by 9.8 times the radius, which was given as 15. Okay, 15. All divided by then the radius, which was 15. So all we have to simply do is take out the calculator, right? So uh, square root of uh, 98 times 15 and divide that by 15. So we get 2.56, right? 2.56, remember the um, results here for angular velocity are radians per second. And that would be the answer for letter A. Let me put letter A here. Okay, now let's move on to letter B. Uh, first, let me just erase this little bit of work over here. And so I have enough room for letter B. Okay, so now letter B. The rider's cage hangs on a pivot at the end of the arm, allowing it to swing outward during rotation as shown in figure 6.37B. At what angle theta, okay, below the horizontal, will the cage hang when the centripetal acceleration is 10 Gs? And here's a hint. The arm supplies centripetal force and supports the weight of the cage. All right, draw a free body diagram. Okay, so now let's take a look at letter B. So let me draw a um, set of axes here. 
And if we notice, they're kind of helping us out also a little bit over here with this little diagram, right? They say that this arm, okay, is, is supporting not only the weight of the cage, but it also provides the centripetal force. And they're trying to have us find essentially this angle, right? If I were to draw a horizontal line, we're trying to find the angle right here, right? Between the, the cage and below the horizontal, all right? So if I were to draw like, let's say a line here, that might, yeah, that looks pretty good, right? Um, if that line were to, you know, bisect essentially this cage and whatnot, that would be, this would be the force vector. This would be the net force. Okay, it's pointing in that direction. And we are, again, trying to find, now I can just extend this a little bit. We're trying to find that theta. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, you know, draw that in my coordinate system here. Right, but what I'm going to do is I'm not going to include, you know, this particular part. I know it's pointing in this direction. Again, I know that they're asking me for this angle. Okay, this is the angle we want but also realize that, that this angle here is the same as this angle, all right? So I'm taking the view here at this particular point right here. This is where my axis is, and I'm just gonna draw this, this vector, okay? So let me erase that, and now I'm just gonna draw this. Okay, now remember, this is just some force, okay? Uh, this is the angle we're after, because remember that angle, if I were to extend this line on out, is the same as this angle, and that's really what we're after, but they're the same thing, okay? So now I can resolve this uh, force vector, which is both supplying the centripetal force and supports the weight. So in what direction does the force point, the centripetal force that is, it always points towards the center, okay? So I mean, if you, if you look at this picture, right, it, wouldn't the centripetal force be pointing in this direction? Here it is. Wouldn't it be pointing in that direction? Yeah, right, isn't it? Wouldn't that be pointing towards the center of rotation, right? The rotation would be happening somewhere around this particular point and the thing's going around and around, right? So that would make sense. So wait a minute, that's interesting. This X component of that force vector is indeed the centripetal force. Now you might call it F sub X, which would be fine, but you have to remember that that is the centripetal force. They are the same in this problem. And then, well, that's cool, all right. Then there's a certain weight, right, component to this to this thing, whatever the case is. I know it's really acting here at the center of mass, right, but I'm going to assume it's just acting, you know, in the center of my coordinate, right? That shouldn't change uh, anything. Um, so if that weight is pointing down and it told us that the, uh, that the arm is supporting the weight, then guess what this vector is that I'm gonna draw in? Right there, guess what that is? That's the weight, okay? That is equal to the weight, okay? That's the force that the arm is providing su that's supporting the weight. All right, so now from here, it's literally going back to the question uh, we just covered in 28, all right? That's all that it is from here now. So. If, uh, if this is a little, I'm going to go through it a little faster, but if it's a little confusing, it shouldn't be. But if it is, take a look at number 28, all right? So now what I want to do is I have to uh, somehow find this theta, okay? And I'm thinking to myself, well, you know, they want to know the, um, they want to know the angle, right? When the cage has a centripetal acceleration of 10 Gs. So I'm thinking to myself, well, I know I have centripetal acceleration of the problem. I know here's the, here's the, um, uh, centripetal force. So hmm, maybe I should start with this equation. Maybe I should start with this one right here. Okay, that I say that we can say that the centripetal force is equal to the mass times the centripetal acceleration. Okay, great. But where do I go from here, right? I know this is 10 g's. Okay, I don't know this and I don't know this. So fine, let's just start making some relationships and some equations. Let's try to somehow we have to incorporate this force into the formula, all right? Because I noticed, if I don't know the mass, right? Do, did they tell us the mass of this? No. So if I don't know the mass, how could I ever calculate this? Well, you might say, well, you can't, and I'll agree. But what that actually tells me is not that I can't calculate it, it tells me that I have to cancel it. That's what it tells me. It doesn't mean I can't do it, it means I gotta figure out a way to cancel this. So I'm looking at my picture here and what has mass in it, oh, the weight, right? The weight, remember, is really mg. 
So somehow I have to get this thing into the formula somehow, right? I got to I gotta get it into the formula, okay? And then you're thinking, well, how does this connect to this, right? How do those two things connect? Um, because I realize that I have the centripetal force. These are the same, but I somehow have to relate these two together. And then there's the aha moment. Wait a minute. They're connected via this triangle and the same hypotenuse with the same angle. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. So let's start solving some stuff. All right, first I'm going to do is get an equation that relates the centripetal force with the uh, overall applied force uh, via this angle. And if you notice, it's cosine, right? Here's the hypotenuse, here's the angle, here's the side adjacent to that angle. So we got cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine of that angle is equal to the centripetal force divided by uh, the overall resultant force. Solve this thing now for FC. Okay, so you just got to cross multiply down there. So it becomes FC is equal to F cosine of theta. Now, why did I do that? I did that because I realize now I can take this and substitute it into my equation. And what's the significance of that? Well, the significance of that is, well, let me first write it first. Uh, so F cosine theta is equal to MAC. The significance now is that I introduced a variable here that I can now connect the W2, right? Because I can now relate it using sine and I can stick that baby in here. And then I can get rid of the mass, all right? That's how they're gonna cancel. So let's take a look now at a formula that includes the weight here, right? Using the triangle, hypotenuse, angle, side opposite of that angle. Oh, sounds a lot like sine to me. So sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. I probably should have done this in a different area. Let me do it over here, guys. So sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Sine of that angle is equal to the weight. Instead of writing weight, I'm just going to do mg. Right? It's literally the same thing divided by f. Now solve this baby for f. All right, just basically switch the numerator and the denominator there. So f is equal to mg over sine theta. So what did that allow me to do now? That's the whole point. I solved it for f because I realized if I can solve this for f, then I can take this result and plug it in for f here. And look, that's how we're going to cancel those masses, exactly what I wanted to do. So it's mg over sine theta is equal to, oop, not equal, times cosine theta. Right, don't forget about cosine equals mac. Now look what happens to those masses. Right, That was my whole goal. I know this might be a little confusing off the bat. You might say, well, how in the, you know, I see it, but how am I supposed to know how to do that? Well, guess what? That's where practice comes in. So let's just clean this baby up. So we have, um, when we do this, right, we basically have G times cosine of theta all over sine of theta is equal to uh, just AC. Okay, now remember that sine over cosine, I'm going to write it up here, sine theta over cosine theta is equal to tangent of theta. But that just means that if I have the reverse of this, right, that means I would have the inverse of this. So cosine over sine is the same thing as one over tan. Okay, so now let's take this, I'm just gonna rewrite it over here on the right, on the left hand side. So now I have G over tangent of theta will equal AC. All right, we're getting somewhere. Switch these two because I gotta solve this baby for theta. So switch those two. So we get G over AC is equal to tan theta. And then just do the inverse tangent of both sides. And when you do that, we get theta is equal to tan minus one of G over AC. Isn't that just beautiful? It's just so beautiful. So let's now plug in the values. So tan of minus one, the G is 9.8 as we all know that. AC, what was the centripetal acceleration? It was 10 G, right? So this is 10 times, 10 times 9.8. All right, and theta is equal to, obviously it's just one over 10. So second tangent of one over 10 works out to be 5.71. Now I said I was gonna go through this quickly, but I wound up not. I, I always say I'm gonna do it fast, but then for some reason I just, I have to explain the whole thing, all right? 
So this should be a pretty complete analysis here. Now remember, the angle we solved for here was this angle, but recall that that angle is the exact same as this angle, and that's the one we wanted, so we're good. All right, we good, guys, we good. Thanks for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe, and um, yeah, I look forward to helping you with all the questions. All right, so stay tuned. We've got a lot more coming to you guys. Thank you.